Hi there, this is Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax, and I'm here on day three of owning a mono price MP Select Mini version 2 printer, and I'm going to share with you some of the additional prints I've run, including a full test run of the Kickstarter evaluation model that I've also run for the Ender 5 and for the Prusa i3 Mark III. going to compare those results in just a moment. Before I get started, however, I'd like to share a couple interesting things about this printer. The first is this filament reel does fit comfortably on the bracket if you're using a traditional size filament reel. The second is there's a very nice feature on the printer, and that is that you can go into the menu and tell it to extrude filament. Now, on some low-end printers, you have to literally push the filament into the Bowden tool by hand until it comes out the extruder to know it's loaded. In this one, you push it in until it reaches the back of the extruder. Then, you go into the menu and you can extrude filament. A really nice feature. The third thing to note is I'm still not in love with this print surface. It's still difficult to get things off, but if you wipe it down with alcohol, it does seem to work quite a bit better. Just don't leave any damp alcohol on the print surface when you start your print, or the print will not adhere. That said, for this larger flat bottom print, the print of the calibration item from Kickstarter, it did stick quite hard, and I had to resort to a metal paint scraper to get it off. But before we start with that, let's talk a little bit about filament. The filament that ships with this printer, I don't like. I found it was very difficult to print with, and it broke in the middle of printing this cat. Now, I switched to the Prusa White filament. This is the standard PLA that Prusa has been shipping for a long time, not the new Prusa Mint, more expensive filament. I've used this on a number of prints, and the cat that came on the printer printed very nicely, except for the very top of the ears uh, sort of broke off. And I believe that's because I was cheating. I was running the printer at 150% speed. So it printed all of the rest of the surfaces really quite nicely. The next thing I printed was one of these calibration cats from Thingiverse. Um, I love printing these. They print very, very quickly. Uh, they're a good test of a printer. What I noticed is that under the tail was quite a bit of waviness in the overhang. Um, and it appears that I had some of the same waviness on some of the overhangs on their cat. I believe that's because this printer has a very small fan. And it really, you'd have to print at a relatively slow speed for the filament to cool sufficiently to handle these overhangs. This is the exact same calibration cat, uh, white filament printed on the Ender 5, also on the Prusa. There is no problem on the bottom of the tail. So the only limitation I've seen on quality so far is overhangs are a bit of a problem for this printer. So now, let's look at the detailed calibration cube and uh, calibration print, and I'll put a copy of this up in the corner of your screen, and then I'll put the spreadsheet in the screen and a link to the spreadsheet in the notes. So overall, um, this didn't qu do quite as well as a $330 printer or a $750 printer, but this is a $180 printer. It scored a 19 by 0.5 based on my scale versus a 23.5 for the Ender 5 and a 26 for the Prusa i3 MK3. So let's go through the various areas. First, dimensional accuracy. That's where you actually measure these cylinders here on both the x-axis and the y-axis. It did quite well on that. Um, it scored uh, nearly a perfect score, um, a score of 4 out of 5. That was actually slightly better than the Prusa and slightly worse than the Ender 5. The next was on fine flow control. First, you can see all of the stringing on the top of this model. The top points of many of these towers did not quite complete. 
and um, therefore I only scored this a 2 out of 5 on that feature. Um, then find neg negative control. That's these little calibration plugs. I was only able to get 3 out of the 5 out. So on very fine control, it seems to have a bit of trouble. Once again, it might be due to the cooling mechanics of this printer. Um, I scored that a, that scored a 3 out of 5. Overhangs, uh, once again, if you look at all of the overhangs, as a, an example, the bottom of this uh, overhang bridge, it's pretty lumpy. Um, the bridge did complete successfully. It didn't break. Uh, the bottom of these surfaces, a little bit lumpy. So overhangs seem to be its weak spot, and I believe that's because of a lack of additional cooling. I scored that a 2. On bridging, however, it didn't do too bad. Um, these bridges here drooped a little bit. It wasn't terrible. I gave it a 3.5. To put that in perspective, the Ender and the Prusa both scored a 4. On XY resonance, a perfect score. There was no, um, no artifacts on either the X or the Y axis. Um, and so uh, there was no ghosting on either of these. That scored very well. XY alignment, um, that also scored very well. So overall, it received a 19.5 versus a 23.5 on the Ender 5 and a 26 on the Prusa. Really quite remarkable, again, for a printer that I purchased fully assembled and fully calibrated. Now let's point to that for a moment. Because this is a manually leveled bed, it's relatively easy to level because they're just Allen screws on the top here, but because it is a manually leveled bread bed to the novice, or if you're brand new to 3D printing, you're not even sure what that is. The fact that it comes pre-calibrated, and it was calibrated quite well. The bottom of these prints are perfect. It's clearly perfectly calibrated and flat is important. So can I re recommend this printer? Absolutely. What I'm beginning to feel is it feels to me like an appliance. As opposed to feeling like a tool, the Prusa feels like a tool and I can adjust it and manipulate it and, and do special things with it, print exotic filaments with it. This feels like an appliance, um, sort of like a microwave oven. You turn it on and it basically just works. And for prints of various types, with the exception, have to look for the cat that I wrote an M on the side, with the exception of this overhang issue, it really is quite nice. So if you're a hobbyist, if you're periodically printing things, um, and you're only attempting to print relatively small items, this is perfect. Obviously this vase would not print successfully on this printer. So I do recommend this printer, and I'm very impressed with Monoprice's ability to produce fully assembled, calibrated printers. Thanks for watching. Irv Shapiro, aka Dr. Vax. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. I have a link to the spreadsheet on the bottom. I'll continue to add printers as I evaluate them. Um, please subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks. Have a good day.